PC vs Mac, it's that age old debate on which one is better. When it comes to video editing, Mac gets a lot of attention for being efficient and optimized, and PC gets the title for best bang for buck, power and customization. But which is right for what situations and just how does the efficiency of a Mac compare to a desktop PC's power? When we take that to the extreme and compare an old MacBook Pro against a new high spec PC for video editing in this video. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help entrepreneurs and business owners amplify their business and brand with video. If you're new here, then make sure you click the subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Now, before we get stuck into the details here, we do know that this is a sensitive topic, so I just wanna frame it up a little bit before the haters have at it in the comments. Up until a few years ago, I was 100% a desktop PC guy. I come from an IT background, I have an IT degree, and I've worked in computer shops and all sorts of nerdy stuff. Then I started traveling a lot more for work and editing on the go, and good battery life became an absolute necessity. So at that point, I purchased a MacBook Pro, which surprisingly ended up replacing most of my work on desktop computers. Computers. I love the idea of having one computer, the MacBook Pro, that I could do everything on, or good enough, that I could take anywhere and work from anywhere. So while this has been good enough for a lot of my needs, even working on some major documentaries and some pretty large scale projects on this MacBook Pro, it's definitely no video editing powerhouse the moment that you leave Final Cut Pro. We're working with editors all the time on different applications outside of just Final Cut Pro. A big one for us is Adobe Premiere so that presents a bit of a challenge. Just for example, even to make a minor change to one of our weekly videos here that we're uploading to YouTube, it could take up to two hours to save out on my old MacBook Pro in Premiere, whereas the same project, same computer, same hard drives, the export would be more like two to three minutes at the most in Final Cut. And in a lot of cases, the export would be absolutely instant. So the biggest drawback though, in my opinion, is the way that you work with external editors in Premiere is way better than the workflow in Final Cut Pro. So if you've watched any videos online, including ours, then this isn't new. You've likely heard that Macs can be incredibly efficient when it comes to video editing. And a lot of that comes down to the hardware and software optimization. But you're probably also aware that you can get significantly higher spec desktop PCs or Windows laptops for much less than you pay for a MacBook Pro. So if video editing is your main purpose, which one should you choose if you could only pick one? And just how efficient is the Mac for video editing when you take the whole power differential to the extreme on a PC and stack an old MacBook Pro against a brand new high spec PC? We recently got a new desktop editing PC to handle our Adobe Premiere projects, and I ran some benchmarks against my older 2014 MacBook Pro to find out how the two stacked up, and just how optimized the Mac really is in comparison. And yes, before you head down to the comments, you are completely right. This is not a strictly fair benchmark comparison. We're comparing a laptop to a desktop, but not only that, we're comparing an older model laptop to a brand new desktop. But all of this helps to illustrate the point that it's not just about the hardware and power. Your focus Focus should be on the end results and the right call for you has a lot to do with the preferred workflow. So here's what we've got. On the Mac front, we've chosen to feature my trusty old 2014 MacBook Pro. Now it's definitely not the latest and it's not the greatest, but this thing has been awesome since I got it back in 2014. So it's the 15 inch mid 2014 model with a 2.5 gigahertz Intel Core i7 processor. It's got 16 gig of 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM. It's got a 512 gig SSD, and the video card is an NVIDIA GeForce GT 750M with two gigabytes of memory. And on the PC front, well, you might say this is a loaded fight. We've got a brand new high spec desktop PC. This one was just sent out to us by MSI and it is an absolute beast. It's got an Intel Core i7 8700K processor, which is clocked at 3.7 gigahertz with a boost up to 4.7 gigahertz. And it's the six core model. It's got 32 gig of Kingston RAM clocked at 3000 megahertz. It's got a 256 gig Intel SSD and it's also got a four terabyte Seagate Pro hard drive as well. And for the video card, it's got an MSI NVIDIA GTX 1080, the eight gig GDDR5 model. So looking at the specs alone, that desktop looks hands down to be the best option here. And it certainly is for a lot of scenarios, but let's check out some real world benchmarks. So for today's test, we're gonna be looking at a mix of software, Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve across both platforms. 
So first off, just to give you an idea on the power of the two systems, we ran Cinebench on each, and these are the results. The MacBook Pro got an OpenGL score of 59.06 frames per second, a CPU score of 536, and a single core CPU score of 130. The beast of a desktop PC got an OpenGL score of 130.58 frames per second, a CPU score of 1399, and a CPU single score of 183. So you can see that there's a massive power or performance difference between these two systems, but make sure you stick with us because things do get a little interesting as we progress. Now, as for the actual video editing experience in each of the software applications on both machines, the MacBook Pro in Final Cut runs really, really well. It is so optimized. Everything is smooth, multiple layers of 4K video. This thing would churn through almost anything that you throw at it. The same system, the MacBook Pro in DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere is where this thing really struggles. Even simple things like scrubbing through your timeline or trying to play back without dropping any frames, you've really got to set these things down to the lowest quality just to be able to do it. And even in fairly basic editing projects on both of these programs, playback and overall editing smoothness it's just not there. It is frustrating to edit in Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve on this system. Now the PC video editing beast, on the other hand, is a totally different story in both DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere, and clearly is designed to work better with all of this extra hardware as well. Even throwing some crazy timelines at these two programs, both of them were amazing at chewing through the video footage. Multiple video layers, a heap of effects, heap of audio, really putting these systems under load, and they play back really, really well. And smoothness, scrubbing through the footage was good. Editing performance is where you would expect it to be on a system like this in Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. And even on the craziest of timelines in Adobe Premiere, the lowest we had to drop the quality to to be able to get smooth editing and smooth playback was to drop it down to half. So we didn't have to drop anything below that, which is insane. Okay, so where we're at right now before we jump into the benchmarks is that on Mac, DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere are running really bad and Final Cut is running really, really well. On the PC side, DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere running really, really well. Okay, so now let's look at the benchmarks and render times of these two systems on these different applications because this is where things get really interesting. Now, I didn't just want to create something really basic, something simple for these systems to export. I wanted to put them under some load so that you could really see where the power is and the sorts of results you could get after putting your system under some load with a pretty complicated timeline. So what we did is we created a 20 second 4K editing project on each of these applications. Then we stacked up four layers of 4K video footage on top of one another. We scaled them all down to 50% to shrink them so they all fitted inside of the one 4K project. So one 4K project, four layers of 4K video. The 4K video files that we're using are 100 megabit 4K footage off the Panasonic GH4. Then to put the system under some more load, two of those clips we set to reverse, and we applied basic color correction to all of the four video layers. And to put the system under even more load, we applied a LUT to the timeline as well. So in Premiere, that was done through an adjustment layer, and in Final Cut, that was done through a compound clip. Okay, so that project file we created in Adobe Premiere, so we could use it on both systems. We also created in DaVinci Resolve for both systems, and we recreated that same project file in Final Cut on the Mac as well. So just hitting play on that project file on the Beast of a Windows system, we had to set it to half to be able to play that back. The same project in DaVinci Resolve, we were only able to get 10 frames per second playback when it's a 25 frames per second project. So DaVinci Resolve, even on this beast of a system, was really starting to struggle. On the old MacBook Pro side, DaVinci Resolve was maxing out at three frames per second. So really, really under some load and definitely unusable at that point. In Final Cut Pro, however, this thing just churned through it. Didn't have to make any adjustments. Scrubbing through the timeline was really snappy. And I do want to point out here that background rendering on Final Cut was turned off and caching in DaVinci Resolve was off as well. So I was already surprised at this point with the power that Final Cut had without any optimization, any background rendering, how it was able to seamlessly play that back, whereas it struggled so much on Resolve on the same system. So the next thing we did was export those files and we timed the renders to see which ones were fastest. And I'm sure this is the part that you're all hanging out for. 
For exporting across the board, we based everything off the export settings in Adobe Premiere Pro for YouTube 4K. So the files were H.264, 40 megabits per second. Adobe Premiere Pro on the beast of a Windows system exported this project file in three minutes, 14 seconds. DaVinci Resolve on the exact same system did the export in 36 seconds. So that is a huge difference between the two. On the MacBook Pro side, Adobe Premiere took a whopping five minutes, 43 seconds to export this project. DaVinci Resolve was pretty similar at five minutes, 40. And Final Cut Pro with background rendering turned off, exported in 42 seconds on this old 2014 MacBook Pro. So these numbers are pretty interesting. And to see the difference with export times on Adobe Premiere Pro on Mac, yes, it's an older Mac, but on Mac versus a really powerful desktop PC. But not just Adobe Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve as well. It really took use of the much more powerful hardware in the Windows PC system. But probably the most interesting part about this whole test, as far as I'm concerned, is the render time on the Mac, the old Mac, on Final Cut Pro. It is insane. And this is one of the key reasons that Final Cut Pro is a major part in our video editing workflow. We definitely don't use it for every project. As I said, for all of our stuff where we're working with external editors, we use Adobe Premiere for that. So now our new beast of a Windows system is gonna be amazing at cutting through that footage. Trying to render that out on the MacBook Pro, yeah, you can see what I've been dealing with. As I said earlier, even to make some changes to some of our weekly videos, it could have been up to two hours to export that out. Whereas now on this beast of a PC video editing system, it's less than seven minutes. So from around two hours to around seven minutes is just crazy. And you can see the render times across the board here. And just to give you an idea as well, we normally edit in Final Cut with background rendering enabled. And it's actually the default, if you're using Final Cut, to have background rendering enabled or switched on. So when we did the same export on that same 4K with four video layer project with background rendering enabled, the time actually dropped to just under seven seconds. So most of our exports, when we're editing in Final Cut, there's a maximum two to three minutes there for an export. And if we're gonna wait two to three minutes, it must be a crazy timeline. But in a lot of cases for us, our exporting out of Final Cut into an H.264 file is normally instant or under 10, 15 seconds. So it's crazy. So after seeing these results, we decided to run a few more tests to see if we could get any different results between the two. And it was pretty much exactly the same no matter what we did. Premiere and DaVinci Resolve on this MacBook Pro was terrible in comparison to how it ran on the PC. Yes, that's obvious, it's a way more powerful PC. But Final Cut on this older MacBook Pro was much, much faster in every export over DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere on the PC, which is crazy. So the Mac clearly outclassed, but this was not a strictly fair fight. So with that in mind, if you're looking for a portable editing solution, MacBook Pro with Final Cut is clearly an awesome choice, but the benefits are highly contingent on you using Final Cut Pro. As soon as you don't, then those benefits disappear. And that's also part of the reason that I'm still using this 2014 MacBook Pro instead of the latest MacBook Pro. For me and the videos that we're creating, there wasn't a huge difference on these render times on the overall editing experience between the newer MacBook Pros and this one when we're editing these types of YouTube videos. But in saying that, I'll definitely be upgrading when the new ones are announced. So then if you don't need portability or you don't like Final Cut, then a desktop PC is awesome no matter what software you're using. It'll just chew through your renders. And of course, if you're looking at the power difference here, then you could go with a Windows laptop, something like the Dell XPS 15 inch, which has amazing specs, not close to the desktop, but still more powerful than the Mac for Premiere and for DaVinci. So even with this crazy beast of an editing system, I'll still be using my old MacBook Pro for Final Cut projects. It's just so fast and it's portable. Now, if I had to choose only one system right now, it's probably gonna be like giving up a child, but I'd probably say goodbye to my editing desktop just for those reasons. And even with the desktop, I'll still upgrade to a later model MacBook Pro when the new specifications are announced. I think the two of them will work well together. And I think our next move is to try and set this thing up as a Hackintosh to see how that goes. 
As for our new desktop setup, if you're interested in exactly what we're running in this PC, I'll link up a separate video with the review of this system on screen as soon as we've finished it. But for now, I've included a breakdown of all the components in the description below, but that video will take a look at everything in more depth. I'll see you soon.